Hi everyone, welcome to Clean Green Living. My name's Leslie Reichert, I'm your host, and today I'm bringing you on a field trip. I have this little place I go to in Uxbridge where I can find all the coolest tools to use to clean with. Some of them are back from the 1800s. If you've ever been with me on a live show or anywhere else, I have this one vacuum that I always bring and I show everyone how it works. It's amazing. So today, on top of showing you that vacuum, I'm going to introduce you to some other tools that they used to use back in the late 17, 18, 1900s, and you're not going to believe that they actually cleaned with these things. Starting off, this is the vacuum that I take. If you've ever seen me live, this is a vacuum cleaner before electricity. As you can see, there's a little teeny tiny slit right there, and that's where the dirt's supposed to go. And how you run it, you pump it. You literally go around like this and pump the dirt up. My joke always was they must have been really buff back then because that's a lot of work. But today I'm bringing my friend Karina in with me. She's the owner of Burnett Antiques and we're going to talk about some of the cool things you have in your store that I just love to come and look at. So let's start off with floor cleaning. Okay. We already had my vacuum cleaner. Yep. <laughs> so you have some other cool tools that we found here. Tell me what this is. That is a rug beater. A rug beater? A rug beater. Oh my goodness. And I bet this was really an efficient way to clean a rug, really. It really was, yeah. actually. Um, they would take a lot of their scatter rugs and they would hang it outside on the line and they would just whack all the dirt right out of it. And all their frustration I was gonna right say, out of it. Great yeah. stress reliever as well. Right. And it, not everything was the same shape. They had different right. styles. Yep. Decorative almost. Decorative, because when you weren't using this, you're going to hang this up and you'd like it to look pretty in the house. You don't want just a piece of metal hanging on your wall. Or you could use it on maybe someone's behind if they weren't behind. Probably not uncommon. <laughs> That's a joke. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> we don't ever. advocate that. No. No, 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 no. Now, this one, this is not really a rug beater. No. That's for pillows. This is called a pillow fluffer. And back then, all the pillows were down feathers, and you'd have to fluff them up a little bit. And this is what you'd use. Oh, so you just kind of. Yep. Oh, that's a wonderful little tool. It is. Interesting. Different. I've never seen that before. Now, this is the cutest little thing. Isn't it? This is like for stairs or? Uh, upholstery. Upholstery. O upholstery. Yes. So it's got this little teeny tiny brush that would have been right there. It kind of reminds me of my mother's hair dryer. Maybe, back in the sure. Day. But it was, you know, when they brought out electricity, yep. they have a motor Everything in it. Everything had a big motor. It actually runs. And it takes a few seconds to heat up and really get going, but yeah. And back then they always used cloth bags. Yes. And so they would take this and then the, this would just come off. Yep, and then they would just dump it outside. Shake it outside yep. and put that back on. That and you could use so this for neat. stairs if you wanted to. I don't see why not, but it would probably... And then if you um, needed to fix any something, you could lift this open, undo that, and clean it on the inside. Oh, so they were fixing their own vacuums yes. even back then. Yes. That's amazing. So cute. Let's see. Brush vac. Sweeper vac company. Sweeper vac company. <laughs> Speaking of sweeper vac companies, everybody knows the name Hoover. Right. And you actually have an old Hoover vacuum cleaner. One of the originals, yes. Do you have any idea how old this is? Um, early 1900s, I would have guessed, yes. Oh my gosh. And it, tell us a little bit about it. So, it, you know, do you have any idea about how Hoover, I know that he was actually in a garage when he was developing this. Mm -hmm. And he came up with the first real vacuum cleaner. He did, yes. And that's really all I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. That's why they, my, when we were growing up, they used to call it hoovering the, the carpeting. Right. Not vacuuming. It right. was a hoover. hoovering. Yes. Yep. And they had the cloth bag back then, so you would dump that out. Let's see if it works. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's actually picking up. It still works, yeah. That is so cool. And it's not too loud. No, no, not too bad. And then you just lift this little lever yep. up. Click it back into place. There you go. And it's not, I mean, in the scheme of things, it's probably about the same weight as what people use as a Kirby. Absolutely. You know, yep. maybe 20 pounds. Yep. And they made them heavy on purpose for two reasons. So to hold the motor down, the motor was heavy, and then the closer you got to the carpet, the better it would pick it up. You don't want to be pressing down. So to save the housewife some work, we'll just make this a million pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I see the logic. Naturally. <laughs> 
Well, I think what we should talk about next is laundry day. Okay. So you have some really cool things yes. I want. Okay. We'll be right back. Okay. So laundry day for us is always such a big deal. We have washers and dryers and we still complain about doing the laundry. But back in the, like, the early 1900s, even 1800s, people had a lot of work to do. It wasn't as simple as us throwing it into the washer, popping it into the dryer. So I wanted to take a look at some of these okay. cool things. The first one is the ringer. Now, as far as I understand it, you have one big pot or bucket right. that would have your soapy water right. and then your rinse water would be over here right and so you would basically put it in the wash yep you'd have it all washed and then you would um, feed it through here it's adjustable so as, as thin or as big as the item was um, you slip it in here watch your fingers and then you give this a crank you'd stand over here and give it a crank and, uh, and pull all the water and this is where the phrase um running you through the ringer because it would at least <laughs> squeeze everything out of it everything um, and then they would reuse the water so it's probably a two or three time process it wouldn't be just in oh the, absolutely yeah, yeah wash rinse Laundry wash rinse the whole the whole day and so you were doing this once a week once a week usually on mondays Monday was laundry day. Oh my gosh. And it was the day. The day, yeah. You had to heat up your water. You had to fill the pots. Um, all the younger um, female siblings in the house would help. And that, that was the whole day. Oh my goodness. And this little cool tool, mm -hmm. it's not a plunger. It is not a plunger. You corrected me on that. Yeah, everyone thinks it's a plunger. This is an agitator. So if you had a bigger bucket of, let's say, sheets, or blankets, you don't want to be sticking your whole hand in there. That was probably lye soap, maybe some bleach. You would use this, and it's just like your washing machine at home. That and you would is... Just, and it was, it's very effective. Yeah, because it's got different layers yeah. of how it was doing the agitation really and letting the, the water, water flow yeah. around. That's amazing. It really is pretty effective. Very you effective. You could still use that if you were camping, maybe. <laughs> We're not, no, no <laughs> we're no, not no doing camping. laundry on camping. No, no. <laughs> and this was a commercial ringer. Right. So this one's for something like big sheets. Big sheets, exactly. Like that. And I just thought that would be really amazing to show how even in the laundry, commercially, they were still using the ringer system. Yes, and there would be um, a girl that this would be her job. Oh my gosh, standing at this all day? All day, that would be, she would be the ringer. <laughs> That's an yeah. awful, awful title to have. It is an awful title to have. It's an awful job to have. Oh, really? And it was a sweaty, wet, humid kind of atmosphere as Absolutely well. Absolutely hot. So it was a lot of water. Very hot. Now, one of the stories I heard when you were drying your clothes and it wasn't a nice day outside, you couldn't use your laundry line, right. you would use drying racks. That's true. And you'd have this set up all around your house, maybe near the fire, maybe in different rooms that you weren't using, and you'd hang your laundry on there. And then you'd come over and you'd check it, see what was dry, see what was wet, sort of move it around. And then once it was dry, you'd take it off and then you'd have to bring it over to the table and you'd have to iron. And that is the kind of iron they were using. Yes. Oh yes, and this is a very common, not fancy household everyday iron, and this is what you'd use. And this is very heavy. And so it, it, it's not on this. It was on the stove, right? That you would yeah, heat it exactly. up. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. you just get this really, really hot. Yeah. But then it would also scorch, right? You would. Yeah, you'd have to be fast. You'd have. It was a lot about timing, and you'd have to know how hot and how quick. And there was a lot of technique in yeah. this one. Yeah. And plus, what is this, like 20 pounds? At least, at least <laughs> oh 20 gosh. pounds. That's awful. And we're not complaining about ironing anymore. No. And then we have permanent press, so we right. don't even have an idea what ironing is. There's no is. fluff cycle. And no fluff cycle. <laughs> That's awesome. So laundry, for us, is not such a big deal once you start looking at what people back then used to use. These products were things that they were using every day, and they thought they were the coolest new tools instead of just using their hands in a bucket. So I'm very thankful that you were able to show us some of these things and we can relate to what it was like back then. All right, this is my favorite section. This is the cool tools of this month. And I have found something called a drain weasel. Now you know I hate chemicals and a lot of times when you get a clog down in your sink or someplace like that, the first thing you do is go for the really, really harsh chemicals to clean it out. You, can, you really don't want to do that. I found this tool that will work just as well 
and it's just a little catch-all. Now I've tried the thing where you put, you take a hanger and you put a little hook on it, and you go down in your sink and you play around with it. That works somewhat, but you know when you try and get it out, you end up with this part where you just can't get it out of the sink. Well, if you don't know it, there's a little rod down inside the plumbing that actually is supposed to stop the clog. And that's what that hook will get hooked on. So you don't want to use a hanger. It's just going to be a nightmare for you. Instead, you can use this little tool. This drain weasel has just a little, it's almost like Velcro on the end of it. And it's just enough. You're going to stick it down inside the pipes. And then look, you turn it. And it's going to catch all the hair and everything that's built up down there. And then you just pull it out. Now the other nice thing is you don't have to start picking the stuff off. They give you a replacement one. So when you're done with this, you just take it off and throw it in the trash. It's great. It's got a little turner so it can go around. And it's really mobile so it can go down inside your sink, back up into the, the drain, and catch anything that's up there. So as you can see, these little kind of prickly things are the thing that are going to do all the work, and that's going to clean out your drain so you don't end up having to use any chemicals or anything harsh on your plumbing. And that's going to keep your plumbing running well. You're not going to have to replace it down the road because you've been using an acid in there to clean it out. So that's our cool tool for this time. It's spring and it's time to be doing your windows. Now a lot of people have all different kind of recipes and things that you can do to make your windows cleaner and make it easier, not get any lint or streaks. I mean, we've got the old newspaper trick. I have people that use vinegar and water. Some people have a mixture with alcohol and some other things in it. But I'm gonna tell you there's a tool that you can use instead that's gonna make it so easy for you, you're not gonna believe it. It's called microfiber. Now, a typical microfiber rag has like little fingers in it and you can kind of feel it sticking to you. This is the one that you would get like if you went to your eye doctor. It's a very fine woven, it's kind of silky, and it's going to be perfect for doing anything shiny. So on top of your windows, you can do stainless steel, your glass fronted appliances, anything that's shiny you can do with this rag, and it only uses water. What you can do is you one or two ways. Today we're going to do it with a spray bottle because I know a lot of people like to spray and wipe, just like what you've been doing before. Only we're going to use this as your paper towel and we're just going to use a spray bottle of water. And you're just going to spray the glass and wipe with the dry rag. Now the trick with using the microfiber is to keep wiping it until it almost drags. You can almost feel it pulling, and that means that it's dry. And there's not one streak, one smear, one little bit of lint there at all, guaranteed. Another little trick you can do when you're doing your windows is do one side back and forth, then the other side up and down. So if something does streak or something gets missed, you'll know which side it was on because you kept track of it back and forth on one side, up and down on the other. Just a couple little tricks. So this is microfiber, really cheap, easy to use. You can throw it in the washer, pop it in the dryer. The only thing you don't want to use is dryer sheets or any kind of a fabric softener because the technology behind it is they're minute little fibers that are cut and they're all working and holding onto the dirt down inside. If you use something that's oily, it'll get down inside those little fingers and it'll fill up and the technology won't work anymore. So you just want to wash it with regular soap, dry it in the dryer, and you're good to go for 300 washings. So I think that's going to last you quite a while. Did you know that when you wash your car, you can use between 80 and 140 gallons of water to do that? That's just crazy and a waste of water. I'm gonna show you today how we're gonna wash a car with just four gallons of water. It's really easy to do. There's just a couple things you need to get together before we start. 
and then you're just going to go over your car and I'm going to show you how to do it. So you're going to start off with two buckets. You need two buckets that are always designated for car washing and nothing else. You don't want any grease or any other detergents in those buckets. It's just for car washing. One's going to be for the wash and one is going to be for the rinse. So the one in the wash, we're going to put a couple things in that and that's going to actually clean the car. And then every time we go up to the car, we're going to rinse out that rag before we put it in. That stops getting scratches. Any little piece of dirt on your car can scratch it. So we're going to use our mixture to actually rinse off the dirt first and then we're going to dry it. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be my wash bucket. I'm going to put about a cup or two of pure distilled white vinegar into that. Now vinegar is a natural acid and that's going to work on trying to cut through any grease or grime that's built up on the car. And then the other thing we're going to use is just a simple dish soap. And you're only using drops. Please don't make it foamy. Just a few drops of dish soap. And you can stir it up. Now, if you want to use a brush, you can do that, but you need to find one that's specifically made for car washing. They're very, very soft and they're not going to scratch your car. Don't use any kind of a brush that you use inside for cleaning. Now, we're going to use two microfiber cloths, and these are what we're going to be using for washing. I have a blue microfiber for when we're going to do the glass, and then I have a big towel, and that's what we're going to use for drying. So we're going to start off with our two cloths in the wash solution. And we're not going to really rinse it out or bring it out. It's going to be very soppy wet. And you just want to go over the car and let that solution basically wash off the dirt for you. So instead of spraying it with gallons and gallons of water, you're going to do the work and you're going to wet that. Now you're going to let that sit a minute. Now before we put that back into the wash solution, you're going to rinse it out. And the rinsing is actually taking off any dirt or grime that might have gotten into that rag. We put it back in the wash solution. And the other trick you want to do is in your rinse solution, don't go down to the bottom of the bucket. All the dirt and all the lint or anything else that's coming off the car is going to drop down and stay in the bottom of the bucket. So you want to try and use the water that's on the top of the bucket. And then the other thing you're going to do is now when you wash, just go in back and forth. You don't want to do this circular motion because what you're doing is picking up dirt from the circle and actually trying to rub it into the finish. So we're just going to go back and forth and work our way down. Now the beautiful part of this solution is you don't have to rinse it. There's nothing in there that needs to be rinsed off your car. And all you're going to do after that is you're going to take your drying rag and dry it. How simple is that? It's very easy. You're only using a couple gallons of water to do it. And you're basically being very conservative with the water as well as basically leaving a nice finish on your car. So, Four gallons versus 80 to 120, I think I win.